Hello everyone, welcome back to some more of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last time, a few things happened. Firstly, we found out that the, um, the person that lived in, I think it was Natsume or Shamspear's apartment. No, it was Natsume's, I think, right? Yeah. Natsume's apartment used to be a crim- well, was a criminal. And... But what one of the occupants that lived in where Natsume does was a criminal named Selden. The reason this was important is because... Um, after he was arrested and died in prison, he ended up haunting his, I guess, old apartment. And so anyone that comes in there, just like the occupant before Sosaki Natsume, Duncan Ross, um, they die. And so that's basically what happened to Duncan. He died from the so-called convict's curse. The reason this is important is also because of the fact that Duncan Ross was the lover of Oliver Green. And yeah, she, she took it badly um, when she found out he died. Anyways, um... A few more things happen, and we go to Oliver Green, and we, and we, well, first off, we stop her from ending herself, and secondly, we find out that, if I remember correctly, the reason she was walking down Briar Road at that time during the first Clouded Cook Road case was because of the fact that she received a letter saying that a bar, that someone was waiting at a bar near there to tell her the details of her hus uh, husband, her, of her lover's death. <sighs> there it is. Anyways, with all that being said, let us continue on, and yeah, head right into Trial Part 2. Oh, right. Um, it is like, what, 10.05 at night now, so my energy is mostly depleted. I have a Gatorade right next to me, so if you hear me drinking it, I'm sorry. I'll, like, I'll see if I can remember to pause the video or something. Um... Beyond, uh, what else? Yeah, whatever. whatever. Anyways, see, I'm already like I'm already so tired. I don't even care about certain things. Anyways, let's continue. Twenty third of February, nine twenty three a.m. Yao Bailey, defendant's office chamber. No, oh, not this again. This is it then, Mr. Naruto? Yes. It's time to put, in, to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mrs. Sato. Suffering! So sick! Selfishly! Sidelined! Ah. Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning. Good morning, locum student Mr. Naruto Esquire. Listen to you two, chatting away as happily as if the main pillar of today's trial isn't here. Why would you do that? Oh dear. Oh, we didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps because you had your eyes shut so tightly you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Natsumi? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I have obtained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. Or well, such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I miss the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow, you'll have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk of your path leading to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example! Oh yes, there it is. Inner calm. You... You barely came to see me at all yesterday! I... I was sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful long-lost homeland! 
We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Oh yeah, that's right. They literally came in. This was like what the day after. Um. Uh, McGillard's child? Huh. Yes, well, anyway, I intend to set everything straight in court today. I am determined to uncover the truth. I've actually reached an important decision myself. Oh? What sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. Alright. It would seem Mr. Sholmes isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think, that he's overslept again. The great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. Defendant and your legal representative. The trial is about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. Great. Well, whatever. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Suzuki sans curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client, and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. Alright, let's see what the police have found. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon- Is that the same voice? Why am I losing my voice right now? What? <laughs> anyway. I call upon the counsel for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Chosen by lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mock my words. I feel glad to say, I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could adjust my hat for me. And please, be as ruthless as you like. Yeah? Thieves deserve to die, if you ask me. And especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here. And lead us flock to a righteous verdict again today. No, Lord Van Zeeks, what can you tell us? The prosecution report, please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday, regarded, regarding the defendant's tea. So he does have the results. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the black guard in the dock. Pray, allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in, the dep in, in a little depression on top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsume brought with him that night. Well, the brains of the yard analyzed it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of strychnine or any other toxic substance in it. No poison at all. In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. 
It's in the clear. What a revelation! Then, that means Sosaki's innocent, right? As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Sosaki, Mr. Sosaki Natsu, okay. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But what logic is that? Would would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word! The water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking just as the victim's tea was on the night in question, as the corp has already heard. Didn't... didn't the inspector just say that... Um... Just say that the talk that there was no toxins in the... tea? Bitter was the precise words from the lips of Mr. William Shamsphere. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Is that too much bass? I need to listen in the mic later or something. Whatever. <clears throat> Very well. I will uphold the prosecution's request. There, I, th I think my voices are starting to come back. I guess I was just tired earlier or something. I don't know. Mr. Shamsphere. Yes. It sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailiff! Show Mr. Shamsphere to the stand. Mr. William Shamsbeer, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? For sooth, t'was I, Shamsbeer, did have a belly full of the foul fluid given in mine innocence. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. One may smile, and smile, and be a villain. Forsooth, t'was I, Shamsphere, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget, this man's a rotten thief. I am forgotten, kept all about that bundle of ice cream. Kept all about the ice cold and tidy secret, didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once. And let him feel the sting in my tail. Oh, indeed. By dint of vile and cowardly means have I plotted to further mine own ends, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins. Of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But, would it, would it, would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of the farther east of Len Verona did contrive to poison me. Objection! But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defendant would what the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamsphere? Verily, my liege, I would most gladly speak. Very well. Let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. Alright. <clears throat> Let's see what you have to say. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. 
was in my cup alone that wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Whilst feigning destruction in our debate, ne'er did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the moulds of soap. Wait, what did he just say? The poison was slipped after the tea had been poured. What? Wait. What? What? I don't... What, what, wait, am I, I'm, I'm missing something here. He poured... It was in my cup alone, the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. So he poured it in his cup alone... Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. So, he... So, so supposedly, Natsumi poured his... In, poison, poured the poison into... Um... Shamspear's cup. Shamspear drank it and then used... Whatever was left in Natsume's cup to make the ice, um... Coins or whatever. Okay. Sorry, I, I literally just got confused for a second there. The normal way for poison to be administered, in my experience. Quite. Otherwise, it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix up the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nepponese took the bottle back to his own room. The apps. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ugh, I knew that. By now it should be perfectly clear. A bar or two of cheap soap is holy and sufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused's hands. I wish that would sound better, I wonder. Like a, like a stern voice, or like just a gravelly kind? Oh well. Sirs, madams, tis true that I, Shamspear, be a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have not to lose. Well... I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Alright. The tea and consistency. Uh, hmm. He did use the tea to make my coins of ice. No surprise, the poison isn't found in the tea in mold of soap. Wait, I did use the tea that remained in his cup. Should we present the cup here? Green was not Sumay's. Red is Shampier's. Need only Shampoo's has the tea thing remaining, right? Yeah! So Natsumi drunk it up immediately. This must be the cup of- I, I read this already, so... It's standing inside. Drink it while it's hot, that's the Japanese way, which is right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Oh, here it is, yeah. Near to the drop past the lips, that's a lie, because the Japanese saying drink is while it's hot. Objection! Excuse me? What was wrong with that? Whatever, we'll just go to a four, but what was that? Um... Oh, I get... Yeah? We, we had to do Nops Maze? Yeah, really, game? Unlike the other one, the inside cup is done. 
We already got this conversation, I think. And if we didn't, it's basically the same thing. We just said he drunk, he drunk it down. There. Objection! There it is. Yeah? Really, game? You guys did that? Okay, that, that was too sneaky. Seriously. Because, ugh, whatever, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> you claim that Mr. Natsumi didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. But that's impossible. How, 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 Chop Logic? What is this, ye dark claddy clad, ye darky clad fiend? The two teacups from the scene. One used by the victim and the other by the defendant have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no such ring. Good lord! You're right! It's impossible. It's completely clean! And prithee, sir, what makest thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quoted. Drink. Tea. Why, it's hot. That's right. Yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night, and drank his tea in no time. Huh? If, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea, a ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well, after the several hours the tea was left standing. But, uh... In short, Mr. Shamspear, you clearly lied to the court. Get the to a nunnery. Objection. As a rule, I fill my hollow chalice up to seven times during any one trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yes, on occasion, tedium distracts me. And I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shamspear. Yes, my, my liege. Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused's cup. Could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Eh? Huh? Could it be that, yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in that small teapot left at the scene? A fact that had vanished from your memory until now. Faith, my liege! Thou art a magician, for verily, tis as though ha thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use the tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. Objection! And you've just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before? Are we supposed to believe that? Objection! People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend. Which is why we, uh, we rely on evidence instead. But, in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this spoiled cup was not the source of these of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. 
Hmm. The prosecution makes a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No. What does this mean then? I do declare it means there's no issue with the gas thief's testimony. Apart from a bit about thieving gas, obviously. My lords and ladies and gentlemen, lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear. After I did dine at Grub's Grubbery Ale House. Do we have. Oh! Oh, well, we. Oh, well, that's nice. You actually have a profile. But. Oh, wow! Was this guy the person that had info on Duncan Ross's death? Yeah, bro! Not did pass my lips, but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stooped as low as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites, a broth as wouldst be called soup, and a leaf as wouldst be called salad. As insalubrious as a, me a menu as the establishment we were served. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment tin seen fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But, for I pray, ye wise and noble fellows, ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing, and this be another. Jurors all, your humble servant Shamsbear doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord. If I may speak, my lord. Yes, foreman. I believe we may have been duped by the rotten defense lawyer. Yeah? Really? By me? I do, I do declare you might be right. We all know that the waif there was making coins vice to keep himself warm. But this lawyer said, lad said if he's stealing gas, he deserves a dose of poison, huh? He's been leading us up the garden path. That's what he's been doing. I really never said anyth anything like that. What we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached our decision this time. And we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jurors, foreman. I swear I saw jurors for a second there. And we'll duly hear the jury's findings. What? No! You, you can't yet! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Guilty! 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 I hereby de declare the jury to be in one accord. Oh, happy day. How is this happening? My lord. The defense has searched the right to carry out a summation examination. Very well. The court upholds the defense's right. Typical. My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. This trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Jurors, the court calls upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime of which he is charged. All right. Let's see what you Neanderthals have to say. I'm a man of logic, me. And having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. 
I do agree that the gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid pain. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gases. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, the team my wife shows up for me is a diddle. Sketchy at times. If nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Hmm. I do feel perhaps personal opinion about gas and its suppliers influenced decisions somewhat. But never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter argument was as when it's as unassailable as we'd hoped. And Mr. Shamfir was poisoned. There can be no doubt of that. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shamfir was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court incontrovertibly. But but surely that's almost impossible at this stage. If we don't manage it though, Mr. Natsume will will be found guilty. No delays, counsel. Proceed with the summation examination. Alright. Let me finish off the rest of this Gatorade. The little bear on Minosuke is actually really cute. Alright, so... First thing I want us to talk about is the old man, because he actually has something useful to say for once. Hold it! Does that mean that if the victim could be shown to have ingested something else, you change your leaning? Huh? <gasps> Sorry? What's that now? Oh, uh, I was just saying if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on the night. What's the matter with you? Sorry? I said, if nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Haven't you been listening to me at all? I feel there's an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here. Compared to the other jurors who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to the proceedings far more intently. I... I suppose. The trouble is... He has selective hearing? Exactly. But still. This, this juror may very well be the key to the breakthrough that we so desperately need. <sighs> Alright then. What do you have to say, Sato? We shall overcome this situation it is by exposing the way in, in which Mr. Shamfir was really poisoned. Okay. So we have to prove. So, okay, so the key here is proving that. proving how he was poisoned. If we can do that, then there can he, then we have the other, the other we have the other explanation, and we have everything else. Okay. Mr. Naruhodo, I wonder if perhaps there's something you might have forgotten? Oh? Like what? It's important to watch everyone involved and pursue people. Oh! Okay. So this is the introduction of pursuing people, okay. I will say, I will say that when it happens. Uh... You know, okay, oh, whatever. Anyways, when I want, it's basically, I'll, I'll explain it while she's talking, but when someone, this comes from the um, uh, Phoenix Wright vs. Professor Layton games, essentially when, sometimes when witnesses are speaking, another witness will chime in and they'll have something to say about the current witness's statements. When that happens, you get to move on over to them and say, hey, you had something to say about this guy's testimony? Or that kind of thing. So, yeah. Ooh, look at this. A free hint. Ask about their assertions, and we can move stuff. Okay. Find a juror that seems to be acting oddly. You can pursue them or her. 
I'm just trying to skip this, sorry. Alright. Slide the marker with that to see if one of the other jurors is having an unusual reaction. And pursue him, okay. I guess we were supposed to fail then or something. Hold it! This isn't the time or place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, but really, think of the injustice! Air is a gas and air is free! Why should Altamont gas cost money? Because gas fuels stuff? It... It makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or place to be ruthless either. If I might interject here... Ah, yes madam? It seems my fellow juror takes issue with the price our company charges for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. Oh, what a beastly man. That unkempt mustache, those hunched shoulders, poisoning tea and stealing gas, utterly really unforgivable. No, no, no. Mr. Natsume isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on more crimes. Mr. Natsume hasn't been poisoning tea either. Well, anyway, I've made up my mind. It's as made up as the price of gas. Alright then. Hold it! I assume Miss Ultima will have something about... Talking about gas or something? Could we please talk about the poison rather than the gas, do you think, sir? Well, if you like. I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas every time. You take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. It doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set him straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding. But I think you'll find, poison also can't light or heat up a room. Ah! You're right! I hadn't considered that at all! Young lawyer man? Um, yes? You have a good head on your shoulders. We could use someone like you as our company's legal representative. Well, I wouldn't expect him to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is, I had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Alright. Do you have anything to say? You... you mean it's poisoned? Us, right? It up a tidy few times now. This is most troubling indeed. It's always days like this one when I don't get any wages. I get in tea time, see? And I see her doing it. My wife. She gets in that devilish look on her face. And she slips some white powder into my cup. Then why not just not drink the tea? Well... And... And you drink it anyway? I was brought up proper, I was. If someone gives you a cuppa, you drink it. Even if it's poisoned? And what happened to you? What did it taste like? It was god awful, believe me. Salty as ever. Then, I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea was salt. No! So, she doesn't even care enough to poison me properly, eh? Huh? Unbelievable. Let's move on, please. Okay, you got anything to say? Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all out attack underway here in the case you hadn't noticed against my company's gas. And I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. All I've heard about our wonderful fuel is explosions and poisonings. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. 
Any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the, th the theft of your gas is deplorable. My point exactly. But the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. We have far more devious reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies? Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody's questioning that, madam. Altamont is a very exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, see? And sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes. And take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. When we visit customers' houses to collect the money from their meters, we always have to check whether or not one of these devious companies yeah. has been up to its tricks. You got something to say? No. <laughs> what is that face? What is... <laughs> Excuse me! Do you have something to say about that, juror number three? Oh, oh golly, you mean me! I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I was just, th just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. I just got a little riled about it recently, you see. Go on. And an Altamont gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipework. We need to ask for your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in. And do you know what he did? I'm, um, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then, he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets there. Oh, please. Everybody knows. But it was very nearly the death of me, I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. As I said before, if these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into pipes come into it? Obviously, the gas, there's gas in the pipes, and it's at a fairly low pressure. By blowing air into the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any light connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Oh, I see! In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe the lights of an adjacent property has no, that has no contract with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might. And you can guess what happened, can't you? Well, if he blew hard then... Wait, you mean... That's right, lights didn't just flicker, they went out. Along with the stove, gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard, so the flames went out. <laughs> Jeez, what is he, the big bad wolf? I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all, I said? 
So, by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves and connect to the same networks of pipes. And then when the gas starts flowing again, it just silently seeps into the room and suffocates you. Mr. Naruto, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three. The defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Oh, well, if you like, I don't mind. Well, I do. That's our company's secret method of identifying the rogues. Like I said, madam, it's widely known already. <sighs> Alright. My guess is that we connect this to the old man's testimony? Let's pit you against the old man. Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Well, correlate, not contradict. Good gracious! Two statements do you prefer, counsel? Juror number six. Did you hear what juror number three just said? <gasps> what? Yes, of course! I... I heard him mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsume's tea that it did, in a manner of speaking, pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? Oh, sorry, that was loud. Wow. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time, but the mouth of a gas pipe? Scotland Yard would have enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. What a piece of work is a man. What are you trying to say, Mr. Shamsphere? Also, we're during an estimation examination. Why are you interrupting us? What speakest thou? Prithee, is it not strange and strange? That's what I say to that is what I say to thee, sir. I thought I'd been quite clear. But let me put it another way. The strychnine could have been made on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. So he was sucking gas? Good... Good Lord! What? All the tissues and gas pipes. Is that what he's saying? Or is the, victor, is the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas? Perhaps no actress will perform a kiss scene, kiss scene with him. Mm. For shame, madam. Speaking by fancy. I assure you, I'm not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. Objection! This is no summation examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Nipponese friend's conjecture. To begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. In order to have placed his lips to the pipe that feeds it, he would have to be a contortionist. These are empty assertions. There is no possible proof that the, that the man did as you said. It's true. I have no proof that Mr. Shamsphere put his lips onto the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shamsphere has been doing something in front of the lamp on his wall. And I have evidence to prove it. Alright, you've got our attention, lad. I'll let's see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let us see this evidence then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. Alright, here's the proof, which is easy to see. It's actually Sholmes' picture, because if you look up above, up above the painting, there's a gas lamp. And I'm pretty sure you can actually see some markings on the gas lamp. So, yeah. yeah. Take that! What in the... These are... Wait, what are they called? Yes! Skin prints that were found at the scene. Skin prints, Council! 
I have never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit, permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. My lord, my lord, this is an exciting new forensic technique employed by the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It reveals all of the places that Mr. Shamsphere touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? <sighs> well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Sholmes fellow, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places you would expect. On the table, on the costumes. However, Mr. Shamsphere also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there, indeed, multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appreciating the artwork perhaps? At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of... Ah! I don't believe it. The gas lamp. Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamsphere has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. What? What have you not? What have you been up to, you nut? I'd asked the court to recall juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you recall juror number three's statement. What? Me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, it caused all the lights and the gas stove to go out, and gas to start leaking into the rooms. Obviously, the incident was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamsphere were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in this room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Crikey! Are you suggesting that the man purposely, purposefully caused the gas to- OBJECTION! Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination, I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letters of law. What is the meaning of this Lord Van Zeeks? This curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense, the so-called skin prints. Clearly, that cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. But, it's an exciting new forensic technique, developed by a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Ugh. Hmm, certainly, even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. But, yes, yeah, Susato? Please, my lord, if I may. Miss Susato? It was not in the defense's intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to, wish to present the results of the great detective's, detective's investigation of the scene as a tool by which to explain the possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Ah, okay. And if the trial were to come if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen, and I'm sure the jurors would agree. Clever Susato. You're right. Whether those strange handprints are significant clue or not, it's down it's not it's down to us to decide. Juror number three. Oh, yes, I do declare that the great detective's investigation results soundly sound fascinating. Soundly sound fascinating, yeah. I'm getting tired right now, okay. 
And I want to hear that shady actor fellow has to, what, what he has to say about it, those shady handprints. That's two. Anyone else? No? What's the matter with you two? I was foolhardy. Oh, I did say it, didn't I? And I don't like to break a promise. No, wait. You heard his lordship. It's not fair, Dinkum. Half and half. Great. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. If just one more juror changes his or her mind, Mr. Natsumi's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Sato, but I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who identified the clue after all. This was very much your success. Why, Mr. Shamphir, you seem to be losing your composure. Just one more juror, Miss Jura, Mr. Narhodo. You can do it. Very well. Continue, Council. Oh, we ain't done yet? Uh... Okay. You know what? It's... We're 56 minutes in. I'm clearly too tired to continue. So I think we'll stop here. Next time on the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, we will... Where were we? Right here. We will... Um... Continue on, continue on with our summation examination. And hopefully, we will follow up on the whole thing with... The grub, grub and snub, or whatever, um, Shamphir called it, because, like, he, he was there. We know it. He was literally there at the place with, um, that Oliver Green was going to. So, yeah. Anyways, did, did I save my progress? I hope I did. Alright, anyways, yeah. Uh, anyways. What was I? Whatever. Um,. Thank you all for watching, and uh, yeah, I will see you all next time.